Shut up and sit down. Hi, welcome back. I'm Gabrielle Prendergast. I'm a children's author and young adult author, and this is not a writing vlog. Uh, it's a series of videos about the publishing industry, and we're not going to talk about writing. We're not going to talk about plot. We're just going to talk about the publishing industry and how it works. I get a lot of questions about that when I uh, go out into the world and when I go and talk to classrooms, uh, when I talk to students, when I talk to aspiring writers. Everybody's got a ton of questions, so hopefully I will be able to answer some of them. So uh, one question that I get a lot is, do I have an agent? Yes, I do have an agent. My agent is Barbara Powell of the Irene Goodman Agency. Uh, she's not my first agent. I've had several agents um, and that's a whole other story. I might actually do a whole video about that. Um, but uh, one question I get is uh, when people find out I have an agent, how do you get an agent? How did you get your agent? There's a few different ways, but every time I've gotten an agent, it's pretty much been the traditional way, and that is by sending out query letters. So what you need to start with is that you need to have something to sell. So let me just tell you a little bit about what an agent is before we get started, because some people don't even understand quite that level. So if you think about it like a kind of a real estate agent, if you have a house to sell, um, you need to sell it to a person and how do you find that person? So you can advertise your house in the newspaper, but often what happens is you hire an agent. That agent has connections with other agents and with people who are looking to buy a house. And um, they sort of introduce you and introduce your house to these other people who wanna buy a house. And if the house satisfies what they're looking for, then you guys have a deal. You sell the house and the agent takes commission. A publishing agent is very similar to that publishing agent knows what publishing companies want to buy and who's buying what and so when you give them a book they look at that book they think yeah this is a good book then they introduce it introduce your book to editors and publishers um, who might be looking for a book like that and they know all these people you don't know them that's the problem and not only do they know all these people, but they know what people are paying and they know how the contracts work and they know what's a good price and they know um, how, how the legal stuff works and what you should sell with your book and what you shouldn't sell with your book. They can advise you about all of that stuff. So in a lot of ways, it's like having a real estate agent. In a lot of other ways, it's like having a lawyer. But the main thing is you don't have to pay them. Their job is to sell your book. And when they sell it, they take a commission, usually about 15%. It kind of depends on a couple of different factors, but about 15% is normally what they take. And um, they can make a really big difference in how much you earn and also how good your contract is, how solid your contract is, and they can advise you. Agents also, um, a good agent anyway, will also just sort of try to develop you as a writer. So once you've submitted that first book to them and they've said, yeah, I can sell this for you, and uh, hopefully they do sell it for you, then what's your next book? That's something that you can talk to agents about. They'll be able to tell you what's selling in the industry, what people are looking for, what they think your strengths are, how they think that you can package your first book with your second book. How are those gonna go together? Or do you wanna do something completely different? They might suggest to you that you diversify. That's completely a good idea too, depending on who you are so and, and what you do. So agents are gonna be advising you, but they're also gonna be selling you. So they're, they're your work. So they're kind of doing the job of three people. They're doing the job like a real estate agent of introducing a product, your book, to a buyer, uh, just like a real estate agent introduces your house to a buyer. They're doing the job of a lawyer, which is going through your contracts, making through your contract, making sure that your contracts are all legit, um, making sure that your rights have been protected, making sure that you get the most money, you get the money that you deserve and everything that's owed you. They're gonna be chasing up different contracts um, and different documents that you need. That's part of their job. And then they're an advisor. So they do work a little bit like a manager too. A good agent does. Some agents don't do as much of that, but some agents do. And some of them even do editorial stuff. So you'll send them a, uh, a book and they'll be like, 
I think this book really has potential, but, and I'd like to represent it. I'd like to try to sell it for you, but you need to make these changes to it. And they'll give you extensive notes. And that's really helpful because they have more knowledge about the industry than you do as a beginner writer. And that's really important. That's what you're looking for. So an agent is really helpful. So that's what an agent does. The next question that I get is, do I need an agent? And my answer to that is, if you want to publish at the big five publishers, I'm going to put those names up on the screen because I think I probably got them wrong. Um, if you want to publish at one of the big publishers, then yes, you definitely need an agent because those publishers mostly don't accept unagented manuscripts, which means you can't just send it to them. They just won't accept it. And that's because of legal reasons and also because they would just be deluged with people who think they can write a book and can't. And so they would have to read a thousand manuscripts before they even got to one that was even moderately okay. I guess they just want the agents to do that instead. So if you want to get a publishing deal with one of those big publishers, you need an agent. If you want to get a publishing deal with a medium-sized uh, publishing company, you should have an agent too. They're going to get you a better deal. They're going to be able to negotiate things like multi-book deals. So rather than just selling the book that you've written, they buy that and then they promise to buy your next book as well for a set amount of money, which is great. You might not even have written that next book. And it doesn't need to be like the sequel to the book that you've sold to them. It can be a completely unrelated book. That's called a multi-book deal and that's very common. So you can do that. Uh, they can do an auction where they actually get several publishing companies bidding on your book, which makes the price go up and up and up. That's what happened with my last book, which was great. I never would have been able to do that by myself. That's what you need an agent for. Uh, an agent can also kind of pull apart your rights and make sure that they're only selling certain rights to certain publishers so they can save those other rights to sell to another publisher. Again, to make more money, a better living for you because that's the object. Uh, if that's your object. If your object is to make a living as a writer, I would say yes, you definitely need an agent. So what are the conditions where you don't need an agent? Well, if you're going to be an indie author, you don't need an agent. And that is if you're going to self-publish. And I'm going to talk a fair bit about self-publishing in other videos. I talk a little bit about it in my previous video um, on predatory publishers. So I talk a little bit about it then. I'm going to talk about it in more detail probably next week. But independent publishing is basically independent, being an independent author is basically being a self-published author. And that means you just take care of it all yourself. You don't have a publishing company. You just pay for the money, the, the books to get printed. You pay for the cover, you pay for everything. And then you just distribute it yourself and then you just keep all the profits. And that's totally fine. Lots of people do that. It's very common in romance. Uh, it's less common in uh, some other genres, but there, I mean, I, I'm a cover designer. That's one of the other things I do. I'm going to put the, my URL for my cover design company up on the screen. Um, and I do a lot of cover designs for romance authors mainly, but I also have some clients who do science fiction, who do young adult. I have some memoir clients and they just, for whatever reason, they have a plan of how they're going to get their book out there on their own. So that's what they do. And that's great. If you're going to do that, you don't need an agent. Um, so that answers that question. What do I need an agent? Pretty much yes, unless you're going to be an indie author. Um, so the third question is, how do I get an agent? You get an agent by writing a query letter. You have to have a good manuscript first. Start with a finished book. Very few people get agents with unfinished books. It has happened, but it probably won't happen to you. Um, so you need to finish your manuscript, make it as good as you can, hire a private editor, get people to read it, not your mom, get people to proofread it, check your grammar, check your spelling, all that stuff, make it nice, tidy, and a good book. Then you write a query letter, and the query letter, which I'm going to also do a detailed video about query letters, the query letter um, is kind of introducing your story and you to the agent. So you basically write to an agent, dear whoever the name is, I'm writing to tell you about my book, which is blah, blah, blah. And you summarize your book. I'm going to talk about that in a future video. And you tell them what kind of book it is. Then you tell them a little bit about yourself. And then you say, I would love it if you represent me. And you send out, I mean, I've sent out hundreds of those, hundreds and hundreds. You have to send out a lot. Please don't give up if you get 20 rejections. 
I sometimes see writers who I wanted to be a writer, but then I sent out a query letter and I got 20 rejections and I go, ha ha, I laugh at your 20 rejections. Get back to me when you've had 200 rejections. This is a business, I mean, if you can't take rejection, then you need to find another hobby or job because this is not gonna work out for you. So you need to send out a lot of these query letters to agents and you send them with, normally the agents will tell you how many pages of your manuscript they want you to send with your query letter. Sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 20, sometimes it's 50. Now, because you're sending things by email, some agents just say, just attach the whole manuscript because, you know, why not? If they want to read 10 pages, they read 10 pages. They don't have to read the whole thing. Uh, but make sure that you follow those instructions because that's part of the test. If you get it wrong, the agents are just going to think you're a crank. That's the, that's the truth of it. They want you to appear to be a serious author. So you send those out by email and hopefully some of them get back to you. They either say they really liked the whole manuscript if you attach the whole manuscript or they really liked your pages. Can you send the whole manuscript? And then they, uh, then they say they want to represent you. So they offer to represent you. Normally that's a simple contract that you sign with them and then you're off and running. Whether they sell that book in a week or a year depends on a whole lot of factors. So you don't necessarily go from like nobody to New York Times bestseller in a month just because you have an agent. It usually takes two years for your book to even get onto the market. So that's that's one thing. So that answers uh, very basically how you get an agent. Obviously, there's a whole lot more detail there. Um, I'm going to put some links up on the screen of a couple of places where you can find out who are agents, like lists of agents. Uh, agentquery.com is one place, um, and the Publishers Marketplace is another place. And it will normally those will have the submission guidelines of how you how that agency wants you to submit or how that agent wants you to submit. Um, and you can find. Uh, agency websites too, like my agency, the Irene Goodman agency, they have a website and they have their submission um, guidelines on their website. So that's what you can find. So I hope that answers a few questions about agents. I can't really think of anything else specifically at this really basic level that I wanted to answer about agents. Um, but I hope that answers some questions. I said at some point I will uh, talk a little bit more about like what happens after you get an agent or literally like what happens after that agent calls you and said, I, says I want to represent you because as I said, there's a small contract and then what happens after that? A whole bunch of interesting stuff can happen after that. So that will be another video down the road. Um, if this has been helpful to you, then I hope you will subscribe. Please put any questions that you have into the comments. I'll try to answer those questions. If I get a lot of questions about the same thing, I will probably do a video about it. I'm gonna do a video, I'm gonna do two videos a week. I record them in my car when I'm outside my daughter's music lessons, and hopefully it'll be helpful. I know there's a lot of young, aspiring, not necessarily young, but just aspiring writers out there who uh, really need a lot of answers about the publishing industry, and I can provide those answers, so here I am. You can also find me on Twitter, you can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Facebook, and you can find me at my webpage. I'm going to put all those links uh, and URLs up on the screen, and they will also be uh, down in the details and the description. And uh, yeah, I hope you subscribe, and I hope you enjoy these videos. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye!